Welcome to another back of the net recording. This is for product of prime factors, highest common factor, and also lowest common multiple. A fairly straightforward question you'll get asked is to express as a product of prime factors. So let's express 72 as a product of prime factors. I notice the P, P, and F, product of prime factors. And that is a cue for me in an exam to know that I need to do a factor tree. And I always remember this as P, P, F, and then the T. Um, we sometimes say, if you need a P, P, find a tree. So you're there, ready to do it. It's really quite simple. You start with 72, and you can split that down however you like into its factors. I know that I can halve 72 to be 2 times by 36. I can't reduce 2, I can't find factors of 2 other than 1 in itself, so I know it's a prime number, so I circle it. 36, however, can be 6 multiplied by 6, neither of which are prime numbers, so both of those can be split down. 2 times 3, while well, both 2 and 3 are prime numbers, so I circle them, and similarly I have 2 and 3 here also. So now I've got 2, 2, 3, 2, 3. To express as a product of its prime factors, we really ought to write them in order. So it's 2 times 2 times 2, just check that one, 2, 3, yep, yeah. times 3 times 3. That would get you full marks. You could write it as 2 cubed times by 3 squared, if you wanted to. I didn't say you had to. I just want to show you how else you may have done that, just to be sure that there's not only one way. We could have done 72 and said, I know that's 8 multiplied by 9. Well, that was split down to 2 and 4, which was split down to 2 and 2. The 9 will go to 3 and 3, and lo and behold, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Exactly the same answer. And however you split these down, you'd always end up with the same answer there. Just one little tip for the exam, I sometimes see it written like this. With commas in between, you're unlikely to get the mark for that. You really must show that you know if you times all these numbers together, you'll end up with 72. So it's important to put a time sign in there. Or write it as we did here with the indices. Remember, the key to finding the question is the P, P, F. And when you see P, P, F, I always think P, P, find the tree. Product of prime factor tree. Really helps you do it. OK, I've got two questions here for you to do. Express 45 as a product of its prime factors, and then express 56 as a product of its prime factors. If you'd like to press pause now. OK, welcome back. Hope we've had a go at those. I'll just do them quite quickly on the board for you. 45. I would have gone probably for 5 nines of 45. 5 is a prime number, so I circle it. 3 and 3. 3 3 is a 9. So my answer is 3 times 3 times 5. You may have written 3 squared times 5. Next one, 56. Express 56 as a product of its prime factors. So I'm going to do a factor tree. P, P, F, T. 56. I'm going to go for 7 times 8 is 56, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's how I remember 56 is 7 times 8. Something that a lot of people struggle with. 7 is a prime number. I can't multiply any other numbers to give me 7 other than 1 and 7. 8, however, could be 2 times by the 4. 2 is prime. 4 is 2 times 2. Lowest numbers first. 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. You can always check whether you got that right. 7 times 2 is 14. 
14 doubled is 28, 28 doubled is 56. I'm fairly confident I got that correct. Hope you did too. Okay, moving on to a question here about factors and also the highest common factor and lowest common multiple. We'll do the first bit straightforward. I've just put this in here really just to show how the more simple questions can be. It's asked us here, here are all of the factors of 16. Write down the factor of 16 that is a prime number. Well, we just talked about what a prime number is. 16 I can split into 2 times 8, 8 could be 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, 2 is 2 times 1, and 1 is just 1 times 1. So 2, write it there, is the only prime number. The actual definition of a prime number is a number that has exactly 2 factors, and 2 has factors 2 times 1. A lot of people believe that 1 is also a prime number because it can only be divided by 1 in itself. But however, it's 1 times 1 and it's still 1, so it only has one factor, which is 1. Whereas the definition of a prime number is that it has two factors. So 1 is not actually a prime number, however 2 is, which is why I picked it. Write down all the factors of 14. Well, I know 14 can be 1 times 4, sorry, 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. There's no other ways I can split that up, so I'm going to write 1, 2, 7, and 14. OK, I now need to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple, H, C, F, and L, C, M. And that's where this whole thing with the P, P, F, T, H, C, F, L, CM comes from. I find it's useful for students just to remember all those letters, those initials really, to get into this way of thinking for this question. So H C F L C M. I've recently come across a new way of doing this that I really like. I'm going to show you how to do it. You can use what you found out already, but there's a quicker way. We write down the two numbers, 16 and 14 and we draw a line underneath and to the left of those sorry let me just change the colour of the pen like so I then look for a number that is a factor of both I straight away I can see I've got a 2 there and I write down 16 divided by 2 is 8 14 divided by 2 is 7 or 2 times what gives me 16, must be 8. 2 times what gives me 14, must be 7. OK. Then, the vertical bit is my highest common factor. H, C, F. Which in this case equals 2. It's like the vertical bit of an H. That's how I remember it. You'll see why in a sec. Because the lowest common factor, sorry, lowest common multiple, is the L bit. So we go down. So we come down here and across. And now we've got 2 times 8 times 7. 2 times 8 is 16 times 7, I think is 112. I would have done 7 times 8 is 56, then double it, yes, it is 112. So I know the L shape gives me the lowest common multiple, the L gives me the lowest common multiple, and that is, in this case, 112. OK, I'll give you some more examples of those to do to see how, how you manage with those. Um, you have a go. I'll get back to you later. Press pause now. OK, welcome back. As I said before, this is a fairly new way of doing this for me, so hopefully I'll get it correct. So I've been asked to find the highest common factor, HCF, 
of 24 and 42. So I write down 24 and 42. I draw underneath. I'm just going to say, actually I know 2 goes into both of those. So it's 12 and 21. I've just got to check now that there's not another where I can split those in. I can, I've just noticed that there's a 3 in that. So I can draw my next layer down and we have a 3 there, 3 4s are 12 and 3 7s are 21. And there's no common factor between 4 and 7. So I've got to the limit of what I'm able to split down. So I'm going to do my highlighting as I did before. The vertical bit, let's make it yellow, is there and the L shape is going to be down here and from those two I'm able to get my HCF my L will give me my lowest common multiple and the yellow, the H, the top bit coming down will give me my highest common factor for both of those and looking back at the question I wanted the highest common factor first of all so the highest common factor is going to be 2 multiplied by 3 2 times 3 is 6 so H C F is 6 and then the second bit of the question actually was a lowest common multiple and that's going to be 2 times 3 times 4 times 7 um, I've got this in my head now 3 times 4 is 12 12 times 7 is 84 double 84 is 168 so L C M equals 168 Okay, I'll just let you press pause in case you're having trouble doing these two, so I'll give you a little break just to sort that out. Okay, welcome back. I hope that's uh, given you a chance to do that if you needed a little bit of extra time. Let's try and do these two then. So first of all, I want the highest common factor of 96 and 72. So again, I'm going to write down, just as before, 96, 72. So it's going to be a little bit more challenging, I think. Okay, straight away, I'm going to go for a 2 in there, just because it's easy. 2 times something gives me 96. Well, 45 and another 3 is 48. 2 times 36 gives me 72. I can straight away again see I could do another 2 into there, which would be 24. And half of 36 there is going to be 18. Again, I can do another 2 into that, which gives me 12 and 9. Now I'm stuck for 2's, but I could go for a 3. I'm going to put a 3 in there. That gives me 4 and 3. And now I really have come to a stop. I can't find a common factor for these two. Go for my highlighter. Again, the vertical will be the highest common factor, and the L shape will be my lowest common multiple. Okay, here we go then. 3 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. When it's getting big numbers like this, it's probably worth writing it out because you may pick up a method mark for knowing what it is, even if you then do a miscalculation with actual multiplication. We should do that, we're just doubling. 3 times 2 is 6, doubled is 12, double again, 24. So the highest common factor is 24. The lowest common multiple, well this is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 3. I'm going to write it down again so that if I have made a mistake, the examiner will know that I did have a method and I was part way to getting it correct. I'm going to work backwards this way going across here because I'm quite happy to double at the end rather than times by 3 at the end. So 3 times 4 is 12 3 12 is 36, double that is 72 double 72 is 144 double 144 is 288. Now I hope that's right. I think the lowest common multiple is 288. Okay, that's it for product of prime factors. Don't forget PPFT, highest common factor, HCF, 
and lowest common multiple LCM. I hope you found that useful. Hope you've done the questions. About time we watched another video. Thank you.